welcome back to the Rome One Popular Opinions and I'm pretty sure this is just going to be another vlog now it's not going to be too long or it's not going to be too ranty hopefully like last time and I'll do my best not to lose any clips or lose any audio now that we've obviously found an improvement I'm going to do my best not to lose it if anyone knows why certain Samsung phones just lose audio unless you restart them every couple days do let me know but at first we're going to talk about the book that I've been reading for so long because it's apparently a thorn in my side at this point anyway Diana Wynne Jones is an author that I have a little bit of a mixed opinion on because I liked Howl but I don't think I would have liked Howl as much had I not watched the film because her writing is just in a way overly simplistic like she is creative she is creative she's just simplistic where to the point where there's no stakes like if you wanted to ask me what cozy fantasy was it would probably be something like this because there's no stakes you can have chapters upon chapters of them just like doing laundry but the problem of no stakes <laughs> at least for me is that I don't really care like I don't really care this is the first book where Howl and Sophie aren't like in the center and we're gonna get to Howl and Sophie but this is the first book where they aren't really that relevant and I don't care because like I don't have a basis for already liking these characters like I don't know them like I did Howl and Sophie because I had watched the Ghibli film now I don't mind Charmaine and I don't necessarily mind Peter the problem is that she does this exact same thing it's like annoyances to lovers where it's like these people irritate each other so much that you struggle to explain to yourself why exactly they're supposed to be a couple so I'm having issues with it now Howl and Sophie in this book Howl and Sophie in this book I wish they weren't there like I hate them so much in this book I just wish they weren't there I feel like I would enjoy this so much more without that like I think I got like a chapter or two after Howl and Sophie showed up for the first time and I already don't want to read it because I know they're going to be present for the rest of the book I'm just not at all interested because the way they're written in this book is spoiler or not a spoiler I don't know but if you've watched the film or you've read the book you're going to know what I'm talking about slight spoilers I guess skip ahead <sighs> after they get married they become the cliche horrible horrible couple where he's essentially useless and she's the one who's in charge of everything like they have a son now which I'm not even going to get into how the two of them should not be having children because Howl is useless and she's mothering both of them like essentially Howl and their son should be mothered in the exact same way like don't have a child if your partner is also a child you like you know what trope I'm talking about like it's just not fun to read about like Howl just keeps being whiny and bratty and just the whole chapter where it looked like he was another one of Sophie's children instead of Sophie's Sophie's husband now that they also have an actual son it was just not fun she also takes his last name which I guess this was written a long time ago like why would she necessarily do that like this is a magical society but yeah they've turned into the generic couple into the generic housewife who does everything and man-child husband so it's a joy I wish they weren't here I genuinely wish they weren't here I think then I would be able to enjoy Charmaine and Peter but Peter is also just very irritating just I do like annoyances to lovers sometimes but to this extent I'm like if they do fall in love how like I feel like everything they say to each other is to provoke each other it's just such an irritating dynamic to read on the plus side Charmaine who's the main character of this book is a big reader so like there's a lot of book talk but I don't know what to say about this I was liking it until Sophie and Hal show, showed up that's I guess all that we have to say the next book I'm going to talk about very briefly is A Victory of Eagles which is the next Temeraire book 
I finally fixed up, picked up the next book. I didn't really want to, if I'm going to be very honest, but ah, uh, at least it's a breeze to get through. Like I'm already close to chapter 12 and I think chapter 13 is where part three gets started. So I just have no words. I just have no words for this series because at some point you'll be like that's precious I love their relationship with the dragons and then at another point you're going to just be like why am I reading this who cares this is so poorly plotted it's very obvious someone told her that needs to be three parts and it needs to be roughly between 300 and 400 pages like I feel like you can feel the filler like you can feel the filler in these nine books definitely like there's something she wanted to do in each book and you can feel the filler <laughs> so it's fine though it's definitely fine i like the dragons i don't care about the humans i feel like i've stopped caring about lawrence too after the end of book four so whenever the humans have have to do something or go somewhere without the dragons i'm i'm skimming a lot i think that's why this is such a quick read because i am skimming i don't like her descriptions anymore i don't care about the people i just want to see what happens to the dragons and that's the extent of my care <laughs> about any of this, to be very honest. I think that's it for what I'm reading right now. I read Dune before I went to see the film. And since I'm done with that, I currently have no other required reads. I'm going to walk you through what I'm reading passively. What we are reading passively is mythology of... Slavic people. I'm not really going to translate it at the moment. My brain isn't braining it <laughs> currently. But I'm reading like Slavic mythology. I think this is like the most comprehensive version. There's a lot of pictures. There's a lot of text. It was done in the 60s and it's impossible to find. Like even in libraries it's like request to be brought into library for you to read which is not something I'm interested in. So I hunted down a PDF and I am going through the PDF currently. I've done, I think like the first couple gods, then we're gonna move on. But I find it fascinating, like collective Slavic mythology, like genuine cultural Slavic mythology, not just religious, is so fun to go through. And for the first time probably ever, I somewhat feel like close <laughs> to my own heritage, which is, good or bad i i don't know i don't care to that extent but it's interesting like it's the first time that i'm reading something to do with my people's history and i actually don't find it repulsive so it's a delight there's two of these i think i got both of them in the pdf so i'm slowly working through that i'm also obviously reading the scottish <laughs> myths and folk tales which is my home away from home <laughs> definitely not my heritage but a home away from home so I'm reading that as well and it's fun to see how so many stories from so many cultures have so many similarities like it's we're all just one people and it is what it is aside from that I don't think there's anything else I'm like passively reading I think that's actually kind of it so let's just get into the video I'm going to update as I go along but since I don't have like actual university this semester I'm at home for all the papers that I have to do and everything I'm at home I don't have to go to university there's going to be a lot more downtime for me to read and write and I have been doing a lot of writing that's I think why my brain is feeling exhausted at present so let's see if I can actually film more than twice a month <laughs> now that I have some time as a continuation I um <laughs> I am still struggling with this. I never thought I'd struggle this much with such a whimsical book, but I really am. I just keep dreading that Hal and Sophie are going to come back. And it's just, I read quite a bit actually, like I'm more than halfway through now and I'm still struggling with it. So let's just hope it gets a lot better. I don't really even want to talk about it anymore. I finished the last time I read a book. Now we're up to Tongue of Serpents, which is book six in this series. I've never been this deep into a series and not cared about the characters. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but after the first book and maybe the second, my interest just plummeted for this series because I stopped finding any of it believable. Now I can get past plot holes when the series isn't that serious, 
but I do have to like the characters. I do have to like the characters, and I don't like the characters in this, and I feel like that's its <sighs> cardinal sin. I don't care. Like, except for, like, Temur and Iskierka, I don't care about anyone and what happens to them. Maybe, like, Maximus and Lily, but they're barely present. Like, it's one of those cute things where you're like, oh, a dragon. And then you're happy that the dragon's there, but then you don't care about anything else that happens. Like, I'm going to get through the next four books quickly, probably because of all the skimming that I'm doing. But it is what it is. There's many other books that I actually want to read, but I can't because I'm working through this. And it's a little bit irritating. But I also wanted to talk about something that I didn't even, like, mention before. On my tablet, I've been reading ebooks because I found <laughs> only now I found a way to send epubs to the Kindle app and I prefer the Kindle app as like a reading app because it has the page animation that is my sole reason for reading in the Kindle app I don't like reading ebooks as we well know but since books aren't arriving to me at present <laughs> I can't order books and the books that I want to read aren't necessarily in bookstores or I don't want to buy them I am unfortunately literally forced to utilize the library and the ebook system, which I'm not enjoying. But I wanted to comment very quickly on Miss Newberry's list, Newberry's, what, however you want to say it, I don't care. I keep trying out romances, specifically historical, because modern romance holds absolutely no appeal for me. None. So I keep trying historical romance and I never enjoy it. Now, this isn't like a crime. This isn't, <laughs> the police shouldn't get involved with this one. It's perfectly fine in regards to that. Like it's not Bridgerton, but it's still bad. Like I just know that I don't like this genre and I still keep reading it. And there's something to be said about my reluctance to read other things if I keep doing this to myself. Now this book, just reminds me of episode and i'll tell you immediately why and obviously as always it's your business what you read but if i'm salty about something that's just because i'm salty about it but romance books <laughs> and why i dislike them it's not even the whole concept of the fact that you know how it's going to end episodes like that so many other books are like that i don't care about the element of surprise but the thing that I do hate is that it's always very obvious it's going to be the love interest. And the other love interest is almost never, if ever, a good person. And it's dull. It's just dull. It's one of those things that's a very quick read. But at the end, you're kind of like, how the hell did I spend my time? Like, I knew what was going to happen start to finish. And I feel like the entire genre is this way. Like, minus the crime that happened in Bridgerton. Every single book is like this. Like, you know exactly what's going to happen and when. Like, there's a ball. There's an inciting incident. There's a near kiss. But it's never a kiss because it's cheating if you have another fiancé. It's Or you do cheat in other books. Like, the whole genre is just wish fulfillment which is good for you I guess if the author wants to get that out there that's absolutely their business but for my personal consumption wish fulfillment offers me nothing absolutely nothing because as someone who has written fan fiction before and does write it sometimes for my own wish fulfillment I would never publish it Unless it's specifically catered towards me, that's my own personal problem with the genre. Unless it's specifically catered towards me, where like the love interest is someone I'm attracted to and the main character is someone I can relate to, unless it's that specific, I don't care about it. Like, I don't care about it. These two, for example, want to have children. I immediately don't care. Because if this is supposed to be wish fulfillment, it needs to be personally relatable to me. I didn't care about it. I didn't care about either of their personal goals. I didn't care about them having children in the end. I didn't care about them falling in love because I didn't like either of them. It's just a very tricky genre because unless the specific tropes, tropes appeal to you, the whole book will essentially be pointless because it's not about the story or about 
end game or about a goal or about a message. It's specifically about these two getting together. So if you're not personally invested in either of them or their goals, you're not going to care. At least I'm not going to. And let's say it did personally cater to me. Then my thought process would be, but like, what's the point of this? <laughs> like, I could have written this. I have written this. Like, I have documents upon documents of stuff that caters to me, and that's my own wish fulfillment. But what purpose could I have from publishing that, from making other people agree with my own personal wish fulfillment? I, this is just a little rant. This is just a little rant about why I dislike the genre. You're obviously allowed to do whatever you like. I can't believe we have to keep apologizing like this as if our own personal opinions affect everyone in the world. But yeah, I'm not going to apologize again. Like, I hate the genre and I think it's pointless and ridiculous and just no good. But obviously, if you're personally offended by that, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm <laughs> Go touch some grass, get off the internet. I don't know what to tell you. So that is my opinion as it is. So I read that and I <laughs> probably shouldn't have read it because I thought it was a pointless time. Now let's get back to other books. All in all, I'm just not that thrilled with everything I'm reading right now and it makes me very sloggy. <laughs> Understand this is I understand this is still part of the same vlog. It's kind of funny to be like putting on a whole outfit and whatnot. But we need to speak about spring. Like I have been in such a spring mood <laughs> that this is actually insane. Like flower crown, the color yellow, which I never wear, a plant necklace. Like I'm gonna go through the books in a minute. This is not like a spring recommendations or anything. I don't read books seasonally in general I read what I feel like reading but I've been in such a spring mood it is due to all the content that's been recommended to me obviously because everyone's currently in a spring mood however I do believe that there's just something in the air I don't really have spring so I'm sort of pretending that I do because as I said after global warming like where I live we used to have seasons we no longer do so currently it's either very cold, like I'm feeling a little bit chilly now, or it's very hot to the point of like it almost being summer. I'm taking advantage of the chilly moments because I will not be in a good mood when I am hot. So let's just use this time to pretend to have spring. And I'm going to talk to you about the books because my TBR has been a bit of a mess. Like you saw me reading several books already in this video and I will quickly walk you through what you missed. Cheers. <laughs> Anywho, now I'm going to just tell you what I've been reading. I read a book that I gave one star like 
overall, if you look at the quality of my reading for <laughs> a little bit, it's not good. Like even though I give the Tamarir books like four stars, it's still not great. Like I don't care about those books the moment I finish them. <laughs> so this book is the bane of my existence. It's not Monte Cristo level of I don't want to pick it up, but it's up there. Like it's genuinely up there. I, <laughs> I see it next to my couch and I immediately don't feel like reading. Now, I didn't necessarily love Howl's Moving Castle either, but as we already mentioned, I had somewhat of an attachment already to those characters. Now that I'm reading this without any attachment, I can see how much I actually don't like the cozy, low stakes genre in general because nothing happens to make me like this, these characters. Like all I see is their daily lives and that's essentially boring to me. I don't get to know characters <laughs> by just looking at their daily life, which may seem contrary to what it's supposed to do. I just don't like low stakes fantasy, like actually non-existent stakes fantasy because it's fluff and I don't necessarily like books that are solely fluff. I just like fluff in books, if that makes any sense. So this hopefully will be finished very soon, but I'm just putting it off. Like I'm already on 260 pages in and I'm still, still not doing it. I just wanted to mention this thing because I'm writing a lot. Like genuinely, now that I don't have university that I don't have to go to, I've been writing like crazy. And I constantly go through this this random book I think it's my mother's I think she got it for herself like one Christmas with a book of recipes or whatever but this isn't just recipes this is like information about the herbs and the plants and how they're used and what their benefits are considered to be I just find the cover beautiful to look at the entire thing is just so comforting and then there's recipes and there's beautiful images of like plants in there I just find it a joy to flip through. It has that glossy paper that's like very, very nice to the touch. And then there's food. I'm going to try and find something. There's like pies and whatnot. It's just a delight to flip through, even though I only use it for writing like 2% of the time when I need to look up a plant or something. Now the next bit is just me whining about not having spring in my life, but these covers of like the poetry editions are gorgeous they're so springy to me i read a couple of the emily dickinson poems one night i literally just felt like reading poetry i picked it up and i like hunted down some poems that i felt like reading about march or april or spring in general and this one is <laughs> just stunning stunning i prefer him quite a bit i actually put some tabs my favorite poems. I love Tennyson's poetry. I just love his articulation of the thoughts that he has. It's just lovely. The two that I marked are Of Old Sat Freedom on the Heights and I think it's Nothing Will Die. I love both of those poems and both of these just feel so much like spring to me. So yeah, poetry is the time. Now, I do need to read this. I've had this, I want to say, for two years. Because like, I know I bought it in spring and then didn't read it in spring. So it could be two years and it could be last year. I don't know. But I want to say two years. It feels like last year is way too recent. But The Secret Garden. I want to read it. <laughs> it's extremely short. There's no excuse not to read it. I watched the film also like two years ago. I think I bought this. I think I bought this after the film. I need to read it in spring <laughs> because like it's a garden there's flowers I really really need to re read it so yes this is like on the agenda for this spring but I haven't touched it yet and again because uh, we're not going to mention summer summer does not compute into my brain yet every time I think about the possibility of summer I feel physically sick but <laughs> every time in spring this book calls out to me like I think I've read it we're not gonna count the fact that I read it when I was a kid because I didn't remember anything I think I read it two or three times at this point I want to say three counting the ebook read through I definitely read this twice 
this edition. So three times I've already read this. I read it every year. The trilogy, because it... <laughs> this is, I guess, the extent of cozy reading for me, where there's no stakes, but the writing is just pleasant and beautiful, and I just like reading it. I stress these out like over a couple months usually these three books because of how much I enjoy reading them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's the time yet but this edition is also actually stunning. Like It flips very easily and comfortably. It's such a beautiful book to read. And I'm just... It's very rare that a cozy book also has one of the best romances of all time. Now, another thing is I got <laughs> this. I got like for my birthday, it isn't my birthday yet, but I got it like in advance because my store was gonna run out. I got the two classics box sets where it's like little black classics and modern classics. And I like, I've been reading through the black ones. My dad's been reading through the modern ones and we like go in order and then rate them and then we're gonna make like the best average rating in the end. I've been going through the little ones. This one I have to read today, which is <laughs> this one. That's the one that's slated for me today. We'll see how I feel about it because if I don't like them, if I feel like DNFing them, I just read another one for that day because I like having one to read that day. So if I haven't read one, I'm just gonna like go to the next one. Mine have mostly been excellent, like very few, I think one got a rating below four stars and I think I've DNF'd two so far out of ten which is great he has not had that luck he has DNF'd four or five of the more modern classics so we'll see how I feel about them mostly poetry and nonsense like that but this is slated for today we're gonna see how I feel about it like this obviously has nothing to do with spring or summer or anything this is just something that I got for my birthday and I'm gonna read every single day so that's it for now as far as updates go I haven't been reading Temeraire because I'm just unable to force myself to read it but also I got in the mail <laughs> I got in the mail um the first volume of Natsume and the fourth Naomi Novik but we'll not talk about that the first volume of Natsume I got in the mail after three three months four almost four months and I already got the refund and everything but I'm so happy. I read it today. I'm just so happy. Anytime I read or consume anything to do with this story. There's differences to the anime, so I really appreciated that. And on that note, watch that anime possibly now. For the first time I watched it, I think it was also like February to March of the last year. And it goes through all the seasons. Like there's snow, there's spring, there's summer. But I feel like it's such a perfect spring winter to spring read and I'm slowly working through seasons five and six because I refuse to finish my rewatch like I've been watching them before bed and I've been doing my utmost to slow down because I physically can't comprehend not having a Natsume episode to watch and like that's a tragedy. <laughs> the last thing I feel like discussing today is how horrible this book was. Now, for the record, <laughs> the last year has been the first year in a long while that I've allowed myself to purchase books I know nothing about. I mean, I know something about, but not a lot. I haven't read reviews. I haven't looked into the specifics, and I haven't read the book online. I am no longer doing that because this book was a one-star read it's not nowhere near Pillars of the Earth. I feel like still that's the worst book I've ever read and that put me off buying books I know nothing about for like forever. But this was like 10 euros. Like it was a, an okay price for a book that I don't know much about. So I'm not that upset. But my God was this bad. I no longer intend to entertain the idea that anything exploding in the last few years is something worth my time. 
Like, we've been through enough, I think, to give this up. This book had unnecessary, I mean unnecessary, you can look at my Goodreads review if you want details, unnecessary animal death, horrible, horrible writing. I feel like as someone who's been watching like crime shows, police shows, detective shows, mystery shows all my life, we've been watching a crap ton of them like in the last couple years in my house because like that's the genre that we can all watch this was just bad <laughs> this was just bad unbelievable unrealistic leaps and bounds were made Cons like contrivances conveniences it was just awful and there's one more important thing to say, which is obviously that everyone says with a brain, if you haven't watched Pretty Little Liars when you were younger, <laughs> good for you. But for those of us who suffered through that phase, th th we didn't need a recap. We didn't need a recap. If this woman says she didn't base this off that show, she's lying. But that aside, my biggest gripe was actually with the ending. When the secondary like <laughs> antagonist was introduced and explained their reasoning horrific horrific i kept expecting this one specific thing that would have not made the book better but definitely would have bumped it up to a two star it kept it resolutely at a one that last conversation with the secondary antagonist like, I just shut down. Like, I've just not had luck <laughs> with new books. <laughs> with new books. Like, I feel like everything that I've bought on a whim has been one star. And one book from the library that luckily I didn't buy, but almost bought. <laughs> almost bought was also a one star. I wouldn't have bought this if it was in the library, but it wasn't in the library. I just wanted to avoid reading the ebook, So I was like, what the hell? 10 euros is a fine fine price enough <laughs> enough like I haven't had this many one stars in a long while and that is just because I've been going off solely based off hype or reputation or what we're never doing that again we're never doing that again this was an atrocious book I do not want to ever mention it again I mean I may in a in a review or like in a wrap-up or whatever but I, I never want to speak of it again I don't think I even talked about the library book either so we're just gonna do that really quick this was a library book like the binding I almost bought it but like at the last minute my brain was like remember pillars of the earth and I put it down in the bookstore and I went to the library to borrow it thank god I did thank god I this book is a different sort of crime to the last one <laughs> to good girl's guide to murder because this book lies to you this book is comparable to Strange the Dreamer level of lies to you about its genre. Now, I know these people are ashamed of writing romance, borderline smut, and of just like letting loose and writing a romance. I know they are ashamed of that. So they get these pretty flowery covers and Strange the Dreamer has beautiful editions and they look stunning. So a fantasy reader can pick them up be lulled into a false sense of security in like the first third of the book with like beautiful writing, flowery writing, like effort put into the magical plot. And then the rest is a romance and not a good one in both cases. Like not just please be brave enough to stick within your genre instead of lying to people. Nowhere on this book or in the marketing of the book or in the description of the book, does it say that this entire book is just a romance? The rest of the plot doesn't matter, isn't addressed, isn't really discussed even, and the two characters in the end are horrible people if you look at the implications of what they did. Just, just awful, awful. Also one star, like I said I don't give one stars often unless something personally offends me like Cersei or like Crooked Kingdom or Pillars of the Earth, <laughs> but these last two books deserved their one stars for how poorly they were marketed, just for how poorly they were marketed and presented to people, like no one in their right mind should actually read this unless what they're looking for 
is a romance and I need to shout it from the rooftops. This was horrific. The moment I realized where it was going, I tuned out. Like I didn't really pay attention. I just skimmed. I looked at the paragraphs that seemed intriguing like a bit and I read the dialogue. It was horrific, horrific. So yeah, these last two books were just an embarrassment and a solid reason as to why look into books before you read them. I think maybe you have to risk spoilers <laughs> to actually know what you're getting into. I'm a huge spoiler fan. I will read spoilers before books and it will either completely turn me off or get me to want to read it even more because uh, sometimes it's more stressful to see how the spoilers fit in than actually finding out the spoilers. I don't know what to tell you except for mysteries. Obviously I'm not gonna spoil myself about a mystery. That's the entire point of the genre. So now that I'm done with the rant, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here on a very sour note actually so i feel like i've been reading such crap me mediocre books for a while now like manga here and there and like decent enough classics and a passable temeraire are not something to get me excited about reading like these are usually my best reading months but i feel like i've had such duds that i've lost faith in the entire <laughs> in the entire thing so I need like a banger of a book to actually get me excited again like at the moment I'm not slumpy because I'm actually in a huge reading mood and writing mood and because I'm out of uni but I feel like I'm not enjoying reading itself if that makes sense <laughs> because I assume that everything's either going to be mediocre or passively okay which is not what you're looking for like I want to be wowed not necessarily because I need to be wowed constantly that happens very rarely maybe like once or twice a year but I've been so let down I don't remember the last time I gave this many one stars like so close together I need something to wow me to remember what good writing actually feels like so that's kind of it I will see you in the next video and please read good books